Remember when you first saw a smartphone and laughed at those old, clunky Blackberries still hanging on? That's how some AI experts are feeling about GPT-4 after Google's audacious unveiling of its new champion, Gemini. Is this a genuine game changer in the world of artificial intelligence? Or just another flashy gadget destined to gather dust in the tech graveyard? Today we will explore the surprise reveal, the amazing demo, and the researchers behind this exciting project. Trust me, you don't want to miss it. Google surprised everyone when they unveiled Gemini ahead of schedule, originally expected in Q1 2024. The buzz was real. Gemini was reported to outshine GPT-4 in many ways, and the demo created quite a stir. The researchers behind the project seemed happy. However, as the excitement settled, some people started picking at flaws in both the model and the presentation. They went from criticizing Google to giving Gemini a hard time. People are understandably skeptical of Google's AI efforts due to a track record of big promises and less than stellar results. It seems like Gemini, impressive as it is, might not be enough to fully redeem Google from this history. Before we dive deeper into the reasons why people are criticizing Gemini, it's crucial to make it clear that we're not taking sides here between Google and OpenAI. Our focus is on uncovering the unbiased truth, even though it can be quite elusive. It's less about determining whether GPT-4 or Gemini is the superior model. Now, let's look at why some people dislike Gemini. The most significant insight into the model's capabilities came from a widely shared six-minute demo presented by Google CEO Sundar Pichai on X, formerly known as Twitter. It wasn't just a slick PR move. Many of us initially praised it because of the clear advancements it showcased over the previous state-of-the-art AI. For example, TED CEO Chris Anderson's reaction says a lot. As per his statement, I can't help but keep pondering the implications of this demo. Isn't it reasonable to think that in the near future, a developing Gemini 2.0 could be part of a board meeting, go through briefing documents, analyze slides, listen to everyone's input, and offer intelligent insights on the topics being discussed? Now, would that count as achieving artificial general intelligence, AGI? What do you think? One thing to keep in mind is that the demo we saw was not an actual unscripted interaction with Gemini. The demo seemed like a seamless, smooth, and high-quality real-time interaction, with minimal reliance on prompts. It showed a level of understanding and processing across different modes that we haven't seen before. But here's the twist. It might not have been any of those things. Well, at least we're not sure yet. And that brings us to the second issue. Google put the spotlight on Gemini Ultra. The demo was at the largest size, similar to GPT-4, but they've only rolled out the smaller versions, Gemini Pro on BARD and Gemini Nano on the Pixel 8 Pro. Gemini Ultra is yet to arrive in January, so why not wait for a cleaner release? The Google executives must have been under some serious pressure, both overtly from the public and more subtly from the challenge posed by OpenAI. They probably thought, let's give them what we've got now with Pro and Nano and dazzle them with what Ultra can do in a fancy demo. But here's the catch. That old strategy doesn't cut it anymore. OpenAI changed the game. People want immediate hands-on experience with AI, not a heavily edited PR-focused and frankly somewhat insincere demo. In today's world, we believe what we can see and evaluate for ourselves, even if it's just anecdotal evidence, which may not be as rigorous as a technical report. Our third obstacle is the technical report. The evaluation process for Gemini Ultra a new AI model, began with an in-depth review of the associated blog post and technical report, rather than starting with a live demonstration. This approach, while less conventional, offered a thorough understanding of Gemini Ultra's capabilities and specifications. Upon initial examination, the evaluators found the information presented in the written materials reasonably impressive, though they speculated that witnessing a live demonstration might have offered a more striking impression. In terms of performance metrics, Gemini Ultra showed a marginal yet consistent advantage over GPT-4 across various benchmarks. Benchmarks are critical for assessing the capabilities of AI models, and even slight edges are noteworthy. However, a point of contention arose with the MMLU, Massive Multitask Language Understanding Benchmark. It was noted that Gemini Ultra was tested with a different prompt setting than GPT-4 for this particular benchmark. This raised questions about the direct comparability of the two models under this benchmark. 
Addressing these concerns, Jeff Dean, presumably an expert or authority in this domain, clarified that the technical paper on Gemini Ultra had accurately conducted its benchmark comparisons. This clarification reassured that, despite the differences in prompt settings for the MMLU benchmark, the overall comparison between Gemini Ultra and GPT-4 was conducted fairly and appropriately. Interestingly, in the COD at 32 test, which involves prompting 32 times to achieve accuracy, Gemini Ultra outperforms GPT-4. However, when the test is changed to use just five examples, GPT-4 takes the lead over Gemini Ultra. This means Gemini Ultra excels in a setting requiring more samples, 32, while GPT-4 is more effective in a shorter format with only five prompts. Now, what do these caught at 32 test results really mean for us users? We won't know for sure until we see Gemini face off against GPT-4 in action. But in the midst of the shaky demo and those frequent missed deadlines, this blog post slip-up, which might have been forgiven if it were the only hiccup, only adds to the challenges in how people perceive this AI model, even though it looks pretty impressive on paper. Well, the technical paper, that is. If you've stuck around till now, your impression of Gemini and Google might not be all sunshine and rainbows. Deception, delays, and blunders. It's a tough look for the company, and we're on the same page with all those criticisms. But here's the real question. Does all this mean that Gemini is an outright failure? The demo, no doubt, is misleading, whether intentionally or not. After watching it, it's pretty clear that it was crafted to make Gemini seem way more capable than it actually is. The why behind this remains a mystery. And those delays, they're frustrating, no doubt, especially after that fake demo, which naturally leads people to assume the worst. Were the genuine improvements of Gemini over GPT-4 not impressive enough to avoid all this overhype, which has sparked a backlash even more significant than the initial announcement? Why do AI companies keep falling into this trap? To be honest, the most remarkable thing about AI isn't just how good it is or how fast it's progressing. It's the fact that, despite being potentially the most game-changing technology ever, or so they say, Companies are often trying so hard to make it seem even better than it actually is. Google, in this instance, has taken a hit to its reputation and, consequently, its products, despite Gemini outperforming GPT-4 on an impressive 30 out of 32 benchmarks. Kudos for that remarkable achievement. Here's the crucial point we really wanted to get across in this video. Despite all the drama, Gemini isn't a lousy model. All of Google's twists and turns don't strip Gemini of its title as the best AI model in the world, again on paper. It's a pretty terrible look for Google, but it shouldn't taint our understanding of the reality here. Gemini Ultra is still on its way, fingers crossed, no more delays arriving in January 2024, on Bard Advanced. Whether it lives up to what the technical report suggests and just how much better it is than GPT-4, we'll find out then. But for now, it would be wise not to mix up a company's marketing antics with its research prowess or scientific effort. The experts who put in the hard work on Gemini probably had very little say in how the demo was edited. We mostly stand by this closing statement from Perplexity AI's CEO, Aravind Srinivas, who, by the way, is a direct Google competitor and has no reason to be partial to Gemini. Quite the opposite. Extreme number one, DeepMind faked the evals and demo Gemini sucks. Extreme number two. Open AI is done. Google is back. Bard will run Gemini for free and burn down ChatGPT because of margins on the computer chip. In reality, Gemini is cool. It's the first model that genuinely stands shoulder to shoulder with GPT-4. A real achievement, especially considering it's just a dense model. Sure, the marketing went overboard, but DeepMind is known for its aggressive PR. Those demos, like the multimodal video, will actually be possible in less than a year. So let's not be part of the extreme crowd. Do you think Google's Gemini has truly outshone GPT-4? Or do you see it as just another step in the AI evolution? Share your insights in the comments below. And if you want to stay updated on the latest in AI and tech, don't forget to subscribe.